the last video, we saw MGFs in action for the Bernoulli distribution, and now we're going to look at a sum of Bernoulli random variables. So let's have x1 through xn be a random sample from a Bernoulli distribution with probability p. So we know that if we have a bunch of Bernoulli random variables and we take the sum, that we have a binomial random variable with size n and then probability p. So what we want to do is use this MGF stuff to find the expected value of this sum of n Bernoulli random variables and also find the variance of the sum of n Bernoulli random variables. All right, so of course we already um, know how to calculate the expected value and the variance. Um, so just to kind of review that, the expected value of the sum of Bernoulli random variables is the same thing as the sum of the expectations. Um, so we're adding this up n times and we know that the expected va value of a Bernoulli is p, so we have n times p. And then when our random variables are iid, then the variance of the sum is equal to the sum of the variances, and the variance, of course, is p times 1 minus p, so we're adding up p times 1 minus p n times, we get n times p times 1 minus p. So this is where we're trying to get to by using MGFs. We'll use this to check our work later. All right, so first thing, let's find the MGF of our sum of Bernoulli random variables. So here's our definition of MGF. It's the expected value of e to the t times the sum from i equals 1 to n of x i. All right, we know that e times t to the sum of the x i is the same thing as e to the t times x1 times e to the t x2 all the way up to e to the t x n. So all we're doing here is taking what's inside the parentheses and expanding it. Now in this next step, we're going to use the fact that x1 through xn are independent. So what that means is we can split apart these expectations. So that means we end up with the expected value of e to the t x1 times the expected value of e to the t x2 times all the way through the expected value of e to the t times xn. So again, that was because our x's were independent. Now we're going to use the fact that they're identically distributed, um, so they have the same MGF. So that means that if we know the MGF for one of these random variables, then we know it for all of them. So the expected value for one of these, as we learned before in the last video, was 1 minus p plus p e to the t. So let's go ahead and sub that in for each one of these expected values. So we get 1 minus p plus p e to the t n times, meaning 1 minus p plus p e to the t, and then take this to the n. All right, so this is our MGF for our binomial random variable. So I hope that we can see a cool thing about MGFs. So if we have a random sample, meaning that we have x1 through xn and their iid um, independent and identically distributed, and if we know that one of these has MGF um, mx of t, then we can figure out the sum of the random variables MGF pretty easily because we can just take the MGF for one of the random variables and take it to the nth power. So in other words, the MGF for the sum of the random variables is equal to MGF of 1 to the nth power. All right, so that's a general thing. Now let's go back to the binomial example. So we were trying to find the expected value of the sum of binomial random, sorry, the sum of Bernoulli random variables, and we're trying to find the variance of the sum of Bernoulli random variables. So we know once we have our MGF, we should take derivatives with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, let's find the first moment. So that means we're going to take a first derivative with respect to t and then evaluate at t equals zero. So let's go ahead and plug in our MGF. So it's 1 minus p plus p e to the t to the nth power. That's what we got here. So we're taking the derivative of this with respect to t. We need to use our chain rule. So um, we have n up here. So n comes down in front. We make the um, exponent here into n minus 1. And then we need to take the derivative of the inside with respect to t. So that gives us p e to the t. All right, so again, that's just chain rule stuff. Evaluate it at t equals 0. So we end up with 
all these e to the t's becoming e to the 0, meaning 1. So we end up with n times 1 minus p plus p times p. So this stuff in the parentheses is just 1, so this ends up being n times p. So we have our expected value. And just to check it, it does look like it matches up with what we got before, so that's awesome. Now we could work on the variance. So it's going to be a similar process. We're going to take two derivatives, set it equal to 0. Um, I'll let you work through that on your own. The answer should be n squared times p squared minus np squared plus np. All right, so we've got our second moment here. We've got our first moment is n times p. So now we can find our variance. So again, second moment minus the square of the first moment. So our variance of our sum of Bernoulli random variables is second moment. So here's our second moment stuff minus the square of the first moment. So um, we notice that this and this are going to cancel out. And that just leaves us with n times p minus np squared. And if we want, we could rewrite that as n times p times 1 minus p. And now we can recognize that as the variance for binomial, which we already knew. So looks like our work checks out.